Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachthani, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Gospels of Matthew and Mark each have Jesus screaming these words from the cross. It's the first verse of the 22nd Psalm. It's known as the cry of dereliction. And it suggests that at this moment, just before his death, Jesus feels utterly abandoned, thrown away, cast aside. The Gospel of Luke takes a less dramatic tone. Jesus cries out, but his words are more confident, more controlled. Father, he says, into your hands I entrust my spirit. These words are not from Psalm 22, but a translation of verse 6 of Psalm 30. The Gospel of John, which we heard tonight, is almost calm by comparison. Jesus says simply, it is finished. Then he bowed his head, gave up his spirit, as if he knew that the victory of life had already been won. Now I give you these three differences because they seem to me to describe how we often feel about death, three different ways. Let me look first at the cry of dereliction from Matthew and Mark. The feeling of these words reflects the terror, the horror that we feel when we face an untimely death, a young teenager, or a tragic violent death like in Brussels. The loss feels wrong. We can't make sense of it. We question our faith in God. It's like the anger that Dylan Thomas expresses at the death of his father. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. We sense that we have been abandoned by God. The tranquility of the Gospel of John, though, can lead us to conclude that death really isn't anything to worry about. As one preacher said to himself, thinking of looking into the quiet face of a beloved friend, death is nothing at all. It does not count. I have only slipped away into the next room. Nothing has happened. Everything remains exactly as it was. This sentiment is often expressed at funerals. An anonymous soldier captured it in a poem that he left behind as he went off to war. I'll bet you've heard it. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gently autumn rain. Do not stand in my grave and cry. I am not there. I do not die. The Gospel of Luke, though, gives us a more comprehensive sense of death. Although death may sometimes come as a friend, putting an end to suffering and despair, it often seems more like a thief in the night, snatching up a life that another was not through living. Yet, God is there, even when we lose any sense of his presence. The English poet and clergyman John Donne captures this sentiment. Death be not proud, though some had called thee mighty and dreadful, for thou art not so. For those who thou thinkest thou dost overthrow, 
die not, poor death, nor yet canst thou kill them. One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, thou shalt die. Do you see the difference? For done, death is a great enemy, but it's an enemy that has been beaten, and in the end will be beaten fully. But that's not true of the other interpretations. When we say things like, death is nothing at all, we're saying there's no enemy to be conquered. And when we say things like, rage, rage against the dying of the light, we're saying that there's an enemy, but it can't be conquered. Ultimately, of course, all four Gospels take the approach that Dunn has described. Jesus died on Friday, but was raised from the dead on Sunday morning. When they began to think about what all of this meant, the early Christians realized that when Jesus was hanging on the cross, in that moment before his death, he died the same death that we all die. He felt the same way we all must feel. And yet God was there. God was with him. It's not that death isn't real, though denying it sometimes makes us feel better. It's real, but its ultimate threat is that it separates us from God. So when God identified himself with Jesus on the cross, he defeated death. He unmasked the lies that death tells. He revealed the magic of the trick the musician performed. And this victory is the victory that opens for us the path of life. All that we are, all the commitments we have made, all the places we have been, all the people we have loved, they're all gathered up by the power of God and through the resurrection transformed into the very life of God. We are taken out of time as we know it into a dimension of God that works in a different way. We have given up the body as we know it and taken on something that is different a spiritual body that leaves us intact, yet exists in another plane. So the next time you go to a funeral, whether it be tragic or just sad, or maybe even a celebration, I want you to know that we're telling two stories. The first is about the person who died. Our tears for that person are justified. We have reason to grieve. But the second story, the second story is a joyful one. It's about the person who is being carried into the arms of God. Our hope is justified. Death has done its worst and lost. Today, is Good Friday. We are left at the end of that first story with the images of the passion in our mind. Our grief is justified. It is a day to feel the reality of the moment of death. A day to remember that death is the enemy. That at the moment before death is a moment when we often feel abandoned. The moment when the lies that death tells comes closest to seeming like the truth. The moment when the trick the magician performs seems like magic. But it's not the only story. Because on Easter morning, we will be singing another story.